Hi guys, Take James here. In this video, I will be showing you how to add more ROMs to your game shell using an Android phone. So this does also work with iPhones and you can also do this on PC, but it's just a lot easier on your smartphone because you can download the games to it and then add them across very quickly. So before we actually add the games, we have to check that our Wi-Fi settings are enabled. So go over to the settings option, press B to go onto it, scroll down until you see Wi-Fi and press B to enter that. Make sure you are connected to your Wi-Fi. Um, mine is the top one. Um, I'm just going to connect to this right now. And there you go, once you are connected it will come up with a tick next to it and you can just press A to go back and then we can just press A to go back again and that is it. Now we need to scroll over and we're looking for the tiny cloud option. What we have to do is press B to go ahead and enter this. Now once this is running, what you have to do is just go and get your Android phone or your iPhone and I'll show you what to do from there. Okay, so on your Android phone, I would recommend getting this app called ES File Explorer. I use the pro version. You can get the normal free version. It's completely free. You can just go ahead and install it. Basically, we need to get this app because this is the app we will use to transfer our games across using the FTP server. So what we have to do, make sure our clockwork stays on on TinyCloud. Go onto our Android phone. Let's just go ahead and open up our ES File Explorer. Now these are the things I will be adding across. I have got two Game Boy Advance game, an NES game, and a song, because this can actually play music if you didn't already know. So what we have to do is just tap the option right here at the side. It's just make sure we tap on network, and then just click on scan at the top. What this is gonna do is actually just start scanning, and hopefully it should actually pick up the game shell. So as you can see, it is actually starting to pick up some stuff. It's found my computer. Um, but we're just going to let this scan, it shouldn't take too long, let's just give it a minute. So once it has finished scanning, it's just going to display everything like this. It shouldn't take too long, mine took about two minutes. And what we're going to do, we're just going to tap on this one that kind of has the PC icon. So just tap on that. Now it's actually going to ask us for a username and a password. The username is CPI. And the password is also CPI. So just put CPI for the username and the password. And now you can just tap on OK. This should now connect to it. So as you can see, we've got two folders here. We've got a games folder and we've got a music folder. This is pretty much where we can put our games and our music. If we tap on games, you can see all of the emulators we have actually got on here. We've also got an IPC dollar sign folder. Not really too sure what this is. But what we can actually do from here is go ahead and add across our games. So if we leave this bit open, basically I'm going to go to my downloads folder and I'm going to go and find my game. So it will be on local, then we can go to download. And here is mine, ROMs and music. What I'm actually going to do is just select everything like this and just click the three dots at the top and just go down to copy. And we just need to find it on here, just copy to. And then once we've got it on this, we can actually just go back at the top and we can find our clockwork on here. It's the top one with the computer icon. So if we just click on that and we will need to actually enter in the username and password again. So remember it's CPI. And then once we've entered that, we can just tap on done and then we can just tap on OK. And now pretty much we can just put them wherever we want. So I'm just going to put mine in the games for now and then just tap on OK and it should actually start copying across. So once they're in the games folder, um, we can actually sort everything out from there. You can also copy across your music separately um, if you wish to. I did just copy across there, but it's probably a good idea. So let's just copy across this song again. Let's just go on copy to, and let's just put it in the, let's just find it, let's put it in music, and just tap on OK, and then it's gonna copy across our song. It should copy across in a second as well. So now what we can do, let's go back onto it. Let's go onto our network. Let's go on to the network again and then let's just go on to our Clockwork Pi and it will actually keep on asking so I would recommend uh, maybe putting it as like remember. Yeah, so I'm just going to put on um, remember password just so it doesn't keep on asking me because that is a bit annoying. Let's just tap on OK. OK, so if we go into games, now we can sort our games. I'm just going to get rid of this because I did actually copy it across correctly. OK, so we're going to copy across Super Mario World and Van Helsing. These ones need to go into the MGBA folder so you can hold them, drag and drop them across into there. 
we tap on OK, it's going to move them. Now if we go NES, you can see we've got our games inside MGBA. Next, we need to copy across our NES game. We're going to drag and drop this into the Nestopia. So you can get as many games as you want, um, you know, for MAME and um, the other stuff as well. Now let's just go back. We've also got our song in here. And yeah, that is pretty much it. So what we can actually do, we can actually close out of ES File Explorer. Um, we can actually close out of this as well if we just press A to go back. Now we can go back onto our game shell and let's test the games out, see if they copied across. So now once we're back, let's go over and let's test out some of our games. So we can go onto our retro games section right here, press B to enter. Now we can go into MGBA and as you can see our ROMs are here. So if they do not appear, you have to press X and it will scan and it should bring them up. And basically what we can do, we can just start up any game and it should load. So let's just try this one. And there you go, it's now working and the screen actually looks really nice. So um, maybe I will try some gameplay um, of this real quick. Let's just have a go. I've never actually played this game before, but um, apparently it's actually a pretty decent game. So that is a problem, it's asking me to use L. I haven't actually set up the triggers for this yet. So let's just go back to the main menu and let's test out our NES game as well. Um, Nestopia, here you go. You basically just press B a few times and it should actually be able to run it and hopefully this should load up as well. So that is pretty much how you copy across your games to your game shell. Apparently some of the games do have quite a bit of screen tear, so maybe just keep that in mind. But um, yeah. So that is pretty much it for this video. That is how you add your own ROMs to your game shell. As you can see as I'm moving around, there is actually a tiny bit of screen tear, so that is kind of annoying. But um, I'm not actually really sure how you would fix that. But yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.